Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video I'm going to continue showcasing some more PvP battles in Pokemon Go Battle League. So this will be the third and final installment showcasing this specific team in Pokemon Go, and uh, if you guys want to check out some more battles, I do recommend watching the other two videos. You'll definitely get a better idea in terms of how to actually run this team in various scenarios. And with that being said, if you guys actually enjoy this type of content, please make sure to hit that like button down below and also leave me a comment if you can. You know, I really don't get too much attention on these videos compared to some of the other content that I upload on the channel, so it really does go a long way to let me know that you guys are actually enjoying this type of content. But with that being said, I'm going to keep the intro short here. Let's go ahead and run through the IVs and the team composition once again, including the move sets, and then we'll jump into the battles. So once again, this team is going to feature a lineup of Gengar, Obstagoon, and Talonflame. Specifically, the IVs on Gengar are going to be 1-14-13. For Obstagoon, they're going to be 13-14-13, and then for Talonflame, they're going to be 15-15-14. Now when it comes down to the movesets for these Pokemon, Gengar is going to have Shadow Claw, Shadow Punch, and Sludge Bomb, Obstagoon is going to have Counter, Night Slash, and Cross Chop, and then Talonflame is going to have Incinerate, Flame Charge, and Brave Bird. Now if you guys do want a more detailed explanation in terms of the IVs and the specific movesets for these Pokemon, I do recommend checking out Part 1. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the battles. Taking a look at our first match right now, we're going to have a Gyarados lead. We actually had quite a few of these in the last video, so for those of you guys who watched that, we're going to go for the same strat for that Sludge Bomb bait. But actually, they swap into Snorlax, super unexpected, so we swap into Obstagoon, we're just gonna go for the cross chops, be pretty direct with it, and uh, quite honestly, I could be going for the Night Slashes here, try to get the boost, but I just want to take out Snorlax as fast as possible, especially considering that they're most likely running Super Power. With Super Power in mind, I do go ahead and shield this first hit, ends up being a Body Slam bait, not really the best, and uh, I can't really afford to use another shield, so... We tank it out, ends up being another Body Slam, thankfully. Could have been a Super Power, or at least maybe they weren't quite at the energy gain for the Super Power. Gyarados is back in. We're going to go for the Night Slashes, you know, try to take this thing out. I'm kind of expecting an Aqua Tail or a Crunch right now, but it ends up being an Outrage. Like, super unexpected for Gyarados to run. Honestly, I, I rarely ever see Outrage. Now we swap into the Gengar and we go for that Shadow Punch immediately, but they actually swapped into Umbreon right away, so they tanked out that first Shadow Punch. We're just going to go for the Sludge Bombs at this point. That's pretty much all we can do. Try and just get off some damage on Umbreon and then come in with Talonflame, so they actually don't shield either of those Sludge Bombs. They still have two shields left, but we're in a decent area right now because we have one shield. Talonflame can definitely tank out the hits from Umbreon, and really our biggest threat is Aqua Tail from Gyarados, which it is most likely running. So now they come back in with the Gyarados, we have enough for two Flame Charges back to back. This boost is going to help us out a lot, and they're most likely going to get rid of their shields at this point too. They pretty much have to, or they're going to have to throw the match. So they shield both of the Flame Charges, we have a nice boost going for us, and we actually get that Incinerate through. Easy shield, like easiest shield of my life right there. So Gyarados is down, we have enough for another Flame Charge or Brave Bird potentially, I just go for another Flame Charge, take down the Umbreon, it's practically dead anyways, like one Incinerate could have done it. Uh, but yeah, there we go guys, we made that work. Honestly, at the end there with the double shields on their part, it was not looking too good, but we pulled it off. Honestly, Talonflame with the boost, man, it is so OP. So taking a look at our second match right now, we're going to have a shiny Articuno lead. All right, so we're going to play this one out like we play out our Talonflame matchups. We're just going to go for that Sludge Bomb directly. Sometimes I like to try and bait this one out with a Shadow Punch, but most of the time I just like to go for the uh, Sludge Bombs and uh, try to get that off before they throw an Icy Wind. So we're going to shield the Icy Wind right now. We're going to go for another Sludge Bomb, and then we're going to swap into Obstagoon. I know that I'm probably going to have to tank out another Icy Wind from their Articuno on Obstagoon, but to be honest, we can try to cancel out this debuff with an attack boost of our own. I mean, it's a gamble, but it's a gamble that I'm willing to take. So now they come in with the Cresselia, so we're expecting some Moonblast at some point. Hopefully we can get a boost on the Obstagoon, no boost right there. And of course, here comes the Moonblast most likely, I don't know why they would throw Grass on our Future Sight. So there's the Moonblast, we can definitely tank out one of those. We cannot tank out another one of those, so we either have to shield or just let it go down. Of course, I have Talonflame with full HP. I kind of just want to save that shield for Talonflame. We're just going to take this Moonblast right now. But wait, it actually ends up being a Grass Knot. So this is actually really, really good news for Talonflame because Future Sight is the biggest threat to Talonflame from Cresselia. We're okay right now. We can take advantage of this opportunity to obviously get a Flame Charge boost and then farm down on their Cresselia. So really, really good for whatever it is they have in their back line. So once again, don't need to waste a shield at this current moment. We're going to save that. 
All right, Cresselia is down. We'll see what they come back in with. They come in with a Swamp Bird. All right, so Brave Bird directly. We can actually beat them out to a second Brave Bird. We're just gonna have to shield their Hydro Cannon, but they can't actually get to a second Hydro Cannon. So things are actually looking good for us right now. We have a boost. They actually tried to Sack Swap with the Articuno right there. So <laughs> that did not work out too well for them. We throw the second Brave Bird. Boom, Heavy Hitter coming with the Gengar. GG. Definitely a solid match right there for sure. So far so good. Let's take a look at our third match right now. So we have a Cresselia lead. Alright, you guys know the drill on this one. Shadow Ball bait. Wait, they actually swapped into Swamper. Alright, so we're just gonna go for a quick Shadow Punch and swap into Obstagoon. Most of the time they don't do this. Like, quite honestly, that's a very uncommon thing to do with Cresselia as the lead. I rarely see that happen. And uh, Earthquake on Swampert. Okay, also even weirder. Most of the time Swampert will go for double Hydro Cannon, but alright, Earthquake on Swampert interesting and then they didn't chill that night slash either so swampert was a sacrificial pawn there interesting and it actually all makes sense now clefable was in the back clefable was in the back that is why swampert was a sacrificial pawn all right can't do anything against it with obstagoon but we do have gengar we do have talon flame and we do have two shields we can definitely play this out we can definitely play this out sludge bomb directly let's burn off that first shield gg all right so cresselia right now this could be really, really bad if they have Future Sight. So Flame Charge directly. All right, let's do it. Gonna take the gamble right here. Not gonna shield it. All right, Moon Blast. That is really, really good. It could have been a bait, though. It could have been a bait on the Moon Blast there. Uh, we'll honestly see, because Future Sight does take a little bit more energy. We go for a second Flame Charge. And now at this point, we have a double boost going for us. I'm not gonna risk it. End up being another Moon Blast, which means that they're most likely running Grass Knot. So I'm happy to see that. You guys always know I'm happy to see that they're not running Future Sight. We go for a third Flame Charge, burn down their last shield, use up our last shield. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. We can definitely make it to another Flame Charge, but also we can get rid of the uh, Clefable with Gengar right here. And uh, with Talonflame, I'm pretty confident we can actually tank out another Moonblast. Yep. And the Flame Charge ready to go. Let's finish off this fight. Uh, we did get an Incinerate right there, and uh, that was really helpful because if that Incinerate didn't go through, I don't know, maybe they could have taken us down. It's kind of hard to say, but uh, definitely some good plays in the end there. It really came down to the wire. Great battle so far, man. Great battle so far. So what do we have? We have a Talonflame. All right, so very similar to the Articuno matchup. We're just going to go for that Sludge Bomb directly. All right, boom, right there. Let's do it. Sludge Bomb incoming. Will they shield though? Yes, they actually do shield. So this matchup can go one of two ways, depending on if they shield or if they don't shield. Because they shielded, we're gonna shield. We're gonna potentially just go for another Sludge Bomb right here. And we do make it to that Sludge Bomb. Uh, sometimes we don't make it to that Sludge Bomb, but we did actually get an extra Shadow Claw through before they got their Flame Charge off. So that was really helpful. At this point, we can just let it go down. Their Talon Flame is left. They have zero shields. We have one shield. I am expecting a Brave Bird right now though. So of course I do have to use up my last shield, but they're out of shields. We're gonna get the Flame Charge boost on our Talon Flame. And I'm liking these odds, guys. I'm liking these odds at the moment. So they come in with the Cresselia. Again, we don't know if it is running Future Sight. This Future Sight could honestly just murder our Talon Flame. And uh, that could be really, really bad. We'll see what they end up throwing. We don't have any shields to protect ourselves, so... Yeah, we'll see if they're running Future Sight. Unfortunately, they were running Future Sight right there. We are able to get to a Brave Bird, though, so this Cresselia is going to go down. GG Cresselia. Come in with the Obstagoon, and Umbreon was in their back line. So that was really fortunate. Honestly, if Clefable was in their back line, that could have been really, really messy. Um, but we kind of lucked out with the Umbreon there. And honestly, that Cresselia running Future Sight, hate to see it, man. Hate to see it. All right, so that is going to do it for the first set of the video. Got a 4-1 right there. 2683 is going to be our ELO moving forward. So yeah, getting pretty close to expert now. With our battles being done for the night, let's move on over to the next day. So we have an Umbreon lead first. Terrible matchup for Gengar. We're going to have to safe swap into Talonflame here. And hopefully we can play out this matchup. We obviously don't want to hard counter swap with the obstacle. We want to save that for later. Tank out the Dark Pulse. We'll just go for a Flame Charge. And they'll most likely swap into something very soon. All right, so Talonflame. We can actually handle this, especially if we get the bait right now with the flame charge. So fingers crossed we can actually burn off a shield. Let's see it. Yes. All right. So fantastic. Shield down. And uh, now we just need two hits of the Brave Bird. Easiest shield of my life right here. And then we're going to throw the Brave Bird. Whether or not they actually shield this or they just decide to let it go, I'm fine with either one. They go with the second shield. I'm cool with that. We're going to risk it all on Gengar right now. We're going to let the flame charge go through. And uh, we're going to potentially try to go for that Sludge Bomb. 
we actually make it through to the Sludge Bomb right as they throw their last Incinerate. So Talonflame's dead, that Incinerate doesn't go through. Umbreon comes back in, and now Obstagoon is ready to go, man. All right, so you love to see it. That was really, really good plays. I'm happy that everything has worked out so far, but we don't know what their last Pokemon is. For all I know, it could be a Clefable, and that could be terrible. We'll see, we'll see. Ends up being a Cresselia. All right, so this is actually still doable. Um, depends on if they have Future Sight. Actually, it doesn't really depend on if they have Future Sight. To be honest, Moonblast is really our biggest threat right now because Talonflame is practically dead, so I don't think we can really do too much with Talonflame at this point. We can tank out one Moonblast from the Cresselia, but I really want to try and get ahead on energy with Obstagoon because don't forget, Umbreon is still in the game. All right, so right here, I just, you know, use Talonflame as a sacrificial pawn. We want to tank out that Moonblast on Talonflame and not Obstagoon because we only have one shield left. So with Psycho Cut on uh, Cresselia, it basically does nothing against Obstagoon. Now they come in with the Umbreon here, we hit him with the Cross Chop, and like I mentioned earlier guys, the Psycho Cuts do little to no damage, so as long as we can get to a Night Slash here, maybe even get the boost, even if we don't get the boost, we can probably make it to another Night Slash, and uh, well we didn't really need to, that first, or sorry, that last Night Slash was fine. We pulled that off, but that was really really close, and that required a lot of really good plays. Like we lost the lead, but we turned that match around. So with that match out of the way, let's see what we got up next. We have a Season 6 Prior Legend, so we have a Lapras. Not a very common Pokemon to see in the Open Ultra League, to be honest. We are going to go for the Sludge Bomb directly. Honestly, I could have gone with either or here with the bait. Uh, you know, they shielded that, that's totally fine. We're just gonna let Gengar go down, most likely a Surf here. Actually, Gengar doesn't go down. We got to another Sludge Bomb, which I wasn't expecting because I don't really deal with the Lapras matchup too often. They come in with the Alolan Mug. I swap in with the Talonflame here. We're gonna keep Gengar alive because, you know, maybe we can use it as a sack swap later. All right, so they throw an Acid Spray. All right, not, not bad, not bad. We're gonna go for the Flame Charge, try to get the boost here and then farm down. That's gonna be the move. And I do expect them to come in with the Lapras right now. So we have another Flame Charge ready to go. This is definitely going to be a shield. All right, fantastic. So at this point, we have two shields and we have Obstagoon. Obstagoon is pretty much the only thing that we have to take this match. If they have Clefable in the back, which they definitely could, we are going to die. We are going to die. So we'll see what it honestly comes down to. All right, so we're just going to go for the Night Slashes here, try to get the boost. We really, really need the boost, especially if it's anything but Clefable. Shadow Swamp Root with two shields? Yeah, that would have been fine, man. That would have been fine. We would have taken that match up, and they knew that. We have another great match coming up right now. Let's see what we have as a lead. We have a Cresselia. All right, you guys know the drill on this one. Shadow Ball bait, potentially. Let's do it. But wait, they actually swapped in with Talonflame. I was not expecting that. I didn't throw anything at that point, so I just went for the Sludge Bomb directly. And now we can just go for a Shadow Punch. This is almost guaranteed to be a shield. Boom, right there. Shield, you love to see it, man. Swap him with the Talonflame, catch it perfectly. This is most likely a Flame Charge. There would be no reason to throw a Brave Bird. All right, fantastic. Let's see if we can beat them out now with the Night Slash. Either that or they just use up their last shield. All right, cool. So one shield left on them. Talonflame's down. They come in with Cresselia. Definitely a Moonblast incoming. I'm okay with that, guys. I am okay with the Moonblast. We actually make it to another Night Slash. You know, Psycho Cut does little to no damage against Obstagoon. I love that. I love that so much. Now, unfortunately, we did get the uh, boost right there, so maybe not shielding the Moonblast wasn't the best decision, but I, I still think Talonflame could honestly handle this pretty well. Uh, their last Pokemon is Swampert. We do have two shields, though, so I'm feeling pretty confident we can beat them out. Again, Hydro Cannon doesn't KO Talonflame completely, but at the current CP range that we're at right now, especially with that Brave Bird debuff, we will definitely die. But they don't have shields, we just have to shield their last Hydro Cannon, and uh, as long as we get this Brave Bird right now, we'll be okay. We will be okay. And then after we throw this Brave Bird, we can also swap into Gengar and then get our debuff gone, so yeah, that, that's really good too. Now we have the Shadow Punch on Gengar. Cresselia, not looking good. <laughs> not looking good for Cresselia. And we finish things off with Gengar. But had we come back in with the Talon Flame, I'm pretty confident that we could have finished things off as well. Another 4 1 right there, we will take it. Of course, that wasn't four battles, but I did take out one of the easy wins that we got in this set. And that 4 1 is actually going to take us to 2703. So we are now less than 50 points away from hitting Expert in Pokemon Go Battle League. So fast forward into the next set, we actually have two wins going into this right now. So the last three uh, battles in this set will determine if we hit Expert or not. So we have a Kingdra lead. Honestly, not super common to see in Open Ultra League, but Kingdra with the Octazooka debuff is such a pain in the butt. We'll see how they end up playing this out. They actually shield right there, which is fantastic. We'll see if we get a second shield right now. 
We don't get a second shield, but that's okay. We're just gonna let Gengar go down. Not that big of a deal, especially with the Octazooka. So we come in with the Obstagoon right now. We go for the Night Slash. We'll see if they decide to use up their second shield. They don't, all right, so they're not gonna go for that. Now they have an Obstagoon. Uh, very, very tricky. Literally mirror match right now at the moment with the Obstagoon and Talonflame, but the difference is that we actually have two shields, so this makes it very easy for me to just go for the Brave Birds straight up. They actually don't shield that first Brave Bird either, so that's really, really good for us, guys. That is really, really good for us. They do still have one shield left, but at this point I can just go for a flame charge right here, and I can most likely make it to another flame charge before they make it to a move, but either way, we have a shield, so we're okay. And I don't think this flame charge will actually kill at this point, but with our Obstagoon and a cross chop ready to go, this is GG for them. Second to last matchup right now, we'll see if we can actually win this, although it's not looking good with that Shadow Swamper. For those of you who watched the last two videos, this is literally my nemesis. We're gonna try and go for the bait right now with the Shadow Punch. Can we get it? Yes, so first shield down, that's really, really good for us. We gotta shield this. Um, we're just gonna try and get rid of the Swampert right now. That would be really, really good. Unfortunately, they get to another Hydro Cannon already, so we're gonna shield that as well. Not something I really like to do with this team. Like, I don't like to burn off both of my shields immediately, but I really don't want this Swampert in there, man. All right, so coming with the Obstagoon, finish off Swampert before it gets to another Hydro Cannon. This is decent. Uh, they come in with Cresselia. We don't have any shields left, so the Moonblast is going to hit pretty hard, but we can tank out one Moonblast. And we actually get the attack boost, so things are looking better for us, guys. Things are actually looking better for us. This could be what we need to actually flip the match. So we're going to throw this next Night Slash. They don't shield. It does a ton of damage, and if we can get to this last Night Slash, we can burn off their last shield potentially or get rid of their Cresselia. We take down their last shield, fantastic. So now Obstagoon going down, totally fine. We have Talonflame, we have Gengar, we can make this work. And they come in with the Alolan Muck. Okay, so with Talonflame against Alolan Muck, we can make this work. We'll see what they throw. They go for the Dark Pulse directly, that's fine. We're gonna go for the Brave Bird here, and then we'll swap into the Gengar. All right, Gengar coming back in now. A little bit of a delay there. We're gonna go for the Shadow Punch. Hopefully we can actually finish off Alolan Muck. So I'm pretty sure they rage quit at that point because uh, Gengar freezing up means that, you know, they obviously weren't responsive or they either just lagged out. Either way, that was an incredibly close finish. And to be honest, if we didn't get the boost on Obstagoon, I'm fairly confident we would have lost that match. So we currently have four wins right now. If we get this last win, this will actually take us to expert. So let's see if we can actually make this happen. Venusaur lead, this is pretty good. We're gonna go for the potential Sludge Bomb bait with the Shadow Punch try and burn off a shield. Let's see if we get it. Yes, we do. Nice. All right, so shield down. We are just going to tank out this frenzy plant. Totally fine. We're going to survive it for sure. And then we're going to go for the sludge bomb directly. Either they don't shield this and Venusaur practically gets KO'd or we burn off their second shield. We get off their second shield, so I'm good with that. Gengar goes down, Talonflame comes back in, and uh, we're just going to let this sludge bomb go through. Totally okay. Two shields, man. Two shields. All right, we're gonna try to catch this. Yes, all right, fantastic. We caught the rock slide on the Obstagoon. You love to see it. That's really, really good for us. So now we can just go for the cross chops directly. Try to take out their Galarian Stunfisk with Obstagoon. Again, two shields, man. We are just chilling with two shields. Things are looking good. Things are looking good. They throw the Earthquake, Obstagoon survives. And uh, I tried to farm down, but I was honestly really nervous that they were gonna get to a rock slide and just KO my Obstagoon, so. Just threw the cross chop right there. They come in with the Swamp Bird. We go for the Night Slash, and then after this, we have a Brave Bird ready. So, swap in the Talon Flame, throw the Brave Bird. Hopefully, this KOs Swamp Bird. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit, yeah, just a little bit there on the Swamp Bird. We get the Incinerate off. Uh, this should KO Swamp Bird after this goes through, but they actually swap into Venusaur. So, Venusaur takes the hit. We gotta use up our last shield right now, but their Swamp Bird is practically dead, and uh, we can get off this last Flame Charge here. Their Swampert isn't going to get to another Hydro Cannon, I can guarantee that. GG, man. GG. Right there, dude. 5-0 to Expert. Let's get it, man. I'm so happy that we didn't get hard countered on that last battle. Like, I feel like the Shadow Swampert in the previous match was our tester. Like, if we got through that match, we definitely had a good chance to hitting Expert. You guys ready for this right now? All right, here we go. Claim rewards and boom! Expert has been achieved. We have now unlocked the Karina outfit, which was actually my season goal. So, super happy about getting this, especially like a 5-0 into Expert. That is just so fantastic. So, Karina's outfit has now been unlocked. Um, of course, we could still push for Legend and I guess, spoiler alert here, we got 
a few more videos upcoming, which we are going to try and make the push for legend. So stay tuned for that. But overall, this is my season goal. I was very happy to hit expert and quite honestly, just getting the 502 expert was just fantastic. And so with that being said, that is going to conclude the battles for today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy them. If you did, please make sure to smash that like button down below. Helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. And it also lets me let you guys enjoy this content because these videos don't really get that much interaction. I also tried to keep the video length a little bit shorter today. You know, I really just took the best battles from these sets and I tried to showcase those battles rather than showcasing some of our easier wins or even some of our more unfortunate losses. So hopefully you appreciated that as well. It's probably going to be the style that I use moving forward just to keep the video length, you know, below 20 minutes if at all possible. My voice is definitely starting to die right now though, so if you want to see more videos like this in the future, definitely make sure to comment down below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all real soon in the next one.